Chapter One: Bigger and Better. Don't forget the children," she said. "They're worth a lot in the final count." "I won't," I replied. "But I don't think they'll be enough. You had a better career, so your net worth will be higher. In the end, that's what matters in the game of life." I don't usually win the game of life. When we have a board game night at our house, I never get the movie star career card with the big salary. And when I cash in my pink and blue pegs at the end, they don't make up for the difference. In the end, it's all about the money. Let's be fair to Hasbro. They had to have some way to determine a winner in their life simulation board game. They chose money, which means that everything in the game eventually converts to a currency value, even the children. The player who retires with the most cash wins. It's a fun game, and there's a logic to it that makes sense to us. Because a lot of folks play real life by the same rules, we've got to live for something. After all, we're here on Earth with time and energy, and we need to do something with it. Hopefully, something that will count somehow. Hopefully, something that will satisfy us, and give us confidence that life is worth living. And the things we're doing are worth doing. Like Hasbro's game of life, we need a goal to reach for, a dream to direct our energy and ambition towards. The trouble is that the rules of real life seem a lot more subjective than the game. We're often encouraged to make our own dreams and make them as big as possible, but then. How do we measure the value of a child against the value of a successful career? How do we measure the value of a close friendship against the value of a thousand followers on social media? What counts for the most in the end? Can someone please pass the rule book so I can double check the values and know what I'm supposed to be doing here? Because whatever the rule book is, I'm not sure I'm following it very well. It seems like any way you measure success, I'm behind. Let me introduce myself. I am nobody. At least, nobody you've ever heard of, which means almost the same thing these days. But I've probably never heard of you either. So we have something in common, and it really is quite common, isn't it? The extraordinary people in the world stand out from the rest of us because of the extra, not because of the ordinary. The ordinary is just what everybody has, and boy, have I got it! I've got no fabulous wealth. Or outstanding achievements attached to my name, but I've got so much ordinary. You could still call me extra ordinary, not because I have something extra beyond ordinary, just because I've got so much ordinary. I have scientific proof. I took a workplace assessment once to determine my strengths and weaknesses. And find better ways to integrate them with the strengths and weaknesses of my teammates. When the results came back, there was one thing that stood out about my strengths, and that was that nothing stood out. There were a number of areas where I scored well enough, but nothing I was particularly good at. Though I know myself, there are definitely things I'm particularly bad at. The assessor hastened to reassure me that this can be an advantage. I'm a good all-rounder, possibly good at a lot of things, even if I'm not excellent at anything. 
That's fine, and I see his point. But in that case, I'd at least like to be an excellent all-arounder. Like the best all-arounder around, you know, if I can. Never mind. I can already think of better all-arounders who have more gifts and more highly developed abilities in more areas than I do. The fact is, I'm ordinary. Extra ordinary. This feels like a confession. An admission of failure. The only people who consistently try to prove that they are ordinary are some high-powered politicians. But then the chauffeur opens the car door for them and they smile because they know it's just a game. And we all know how much power and wealth they really have. Outside of politics, the opposite happens. People work long and hard to convince each other that they have power and wealth, or maybe fame or talent, or anything at all, just as long as it isn't ordinary. Is greatness the greatest goal? We're not supposed to be ordinary, or at least not to admit it, not to want it, or be satisfied with it. We're supposed to dream big, Aim high and never settle for less. Ordinary is just a stepping stone on the path to greatness, something small and slightly shameful to point back to when we finally do make it big, and then we can say to everyone, just look how far I've come, and their eyes will grow wide with respect for our strength and determination they'll think we're great. And if everyone thinks we're great, then we really are, right? In our democratic world, isn't that how greatness works? It makes sense. It also makes sense that greatness is the greatest goal we could go for. I mean, what could be greater than greatness? That's a good question, actually because greatness doesn't always seem to end up being all that great. 